Gary Kalpam joins us from Cap, uh, Kalpam Capital Management. He's a Fox News contributor. And Melissa Armos here today from the Stock Swoosh. Good to see you both. You know, Gary, uh, Phil says that we have to start asking questions about whether, and so we will. Uh, this has implications, this oil sell-off for the global economy. Uh, boy, it is something to see it down 12 days in a row to 55 bucks a barrel. What, uh, what is the bigger or larger message in all this, if anything? Well, uh, look, com combined with everything else we're seeing, mm -hmm. it's worrisome. Look, the good news is the oil prices are down 27% since October 3rd. That is a huge expense cut for consumers, business, especially the airlines and truckers and things like that. But mm -hmm. that type of drop combined with the new yearly lows in so many of these economically sensitive areas, not only here and around the globe, is telling me that in the months ahead we are going to have a serious slowdown in economic growth. You're already seeing it in areas around the world, but I suspect we're going to see it here also. Right. Uh, market is a very good, very good telegrapher of it, and I think uh, this is part of the process. Well, uh, you know, Gary's been on this uh, point, uh, Melissa, for a while, and you know, to his point, there are those signs are all out there. Forecasting the future is a, a difficult thing to do, especially with the economy, more or less the market. But do you agree with him, that larger point that, that you know, we should be starting to get a little bit worried here? No, I'm not really worried. And actually, I'm really good at reading when stocks fall because I mostly teach people how to short stocks, just so you huh. know. But so if there was something that I would tell you to be worried about, I could see it because when, when stocks drop, it's selling action and it's panic. And although we've fallen off the last couple of days, and yes, oil prices have dropped too, and a lot of stocks have fallen, if you look at the way that the earnings season actually turned out in the last few weeks. It really wasn't as good as it could have been. Right. So when you look at that overall and the fact that just in October, the Dow made brand new all-time highs, it's really hard for me to be bearish. I'm so not bearish technically or fundamentally on the market. Things bounce back here. That's your case here. That we, we're, we're on the verge of a, of a bounce back. I don't know if we are or not. I don't think between now and tomorrow morning, it looks like we're probably lower because we sold right. off and we couldn't hold up today. But I'm telling you one thing, one thing could turn this market around if Trump gets some kind of deal done with any right. one of these tariff situations you could see a huge morning gap up in the market in the pre-market and then buying would come in and scoop around and rally just like you saw that the day after the election actually sets us up for exactly what we're about to talk about so we'll come back to you guys in um, in just a moment Melissa. all right easing tensions with china president trump meeting with senior advisors at the white house today on trade fox businesses blake berman is here with the latest blake Hi there, Melissa. The president meeting today with his senior advisors as it relates to trade. And one topic that I was told that would be under discussion from the group was uh, whether or not there would be an auto tariff coming down the line, potentially. The president has made that threat of 20 to 25 percent on auto imports. He has specifically singled out the European Union in this case, did so earlier this summer, though the United States and the, and the European Union are set to have discussions here in Washington tomorrow. Uh, the time Top commissioner for the EU, Cecilia Malmstrom, is set to meet with the president's top trade representative, Robert Lighthizer. It also stands to reason, considering that the G20 meetings uh, are later this month in Buenos, Argentina, that the president and his team would potentially talk about China in that trade meeting. The president is set to meet with the Chinese president, Xi Jinping, in just two and a half weeks. The president's top economic advisor, Larry Kudlow, saying earlier today that as it relates to dialogue between both sides, that's improving. We are now communicating at all levels. We're working, as I say, on background material and preparation. Uh, we're waiting for China to come back with some thoughts, and the process is ongoing. By the way, a pretty uh, unusual event here at the White House within just the last hour or so. A spokesperson for the First Lady, Melania Trump, saying uh, that the First Lady and, and her office want the deputy to John Bolton, John Bolton, the national security advisor, his deputy, Myra Ricardo. They feel that Ms. Ricardo no longer deserves to be in her job. Here was a statement that the East Wing put out within the past hour here saying, quote, this comes from Stephanie Grisham, a spokesperson for the First Lady. It is the position of the office of the First Lady that she, meaning Ricardo, no longer deserves the honor of serving in this White House. Now, according to reports, uh, this stems from some disagreements uh, that the First Lady had with Ricardo last 
last month during her first overseas trip alone when the first lady traveled to Africa. This is highly unusual, Connell and Melissa, considering that when there is speculation regarding possible turnover in this administration, the West Wing normally says no personnel announcements at this time. The president has the confidence in that person and will let you know when that changes. However, the East Wing today is getting out ahead of this one, saying one of the top members of the National Security Council no longer deserves to be in their position. Melissa Connell, back to you. Blake, I mean, that leaves all of our audience asking what the heck went on between these <laughs> two. Do you We've know? Made... Can you say? I mean, it seems. Go ahead. Yeah, no, we, we've made calls on this one. Um, it, this just moved within the last hour or so. The, the reporting of others is that there was an issue as it related to uh, the, 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 the first lady's trip with, yeah. uh, in Africa. As for the exact details just yet, uh, we're making calls. Still, still a mystery. Oh, yep. it's going to be a hot topic for sure. Thank you so much, Blake. And, and forgive me for putting you on the spot there, but I know everybody at home is wondering the same thing. Gary, um, so what is what is your take on all of these latest twists and turns? And I'll direct you back to the idea of trade and Larry Kudlow saying that talks are smoothing out. You know, it kind of reminds me once again that people who deal in New York real estate, especially developers, have a very different language and way of dealing with each other than diplomats. Pretty much the opposite. Well, I have noticed over the last couple of months, every time the markets got hit, we get Kudlow come out and say trade is going smoothly, and then three days later says the opposite. So I don't know what the heck is going on. I think we've been talking about China trade for what, eight, nine, ten, eleven months, and we're still in, in, in the starting gate at this point in time. But I do think something's going to happen here. I do believe that the Trump administration knows if something doesn't get done, market's going to take even a bigger hit, and they don't want that to happen. So I think they're going to start moving a little bit towards China. Hopefully China moves a little bit towards us and get a deal done already because nothing good happens right now. Uh, I've been reading stories about how uh, spending by uh, corporations have been heading down because of uncertainty in tariffs. We're talking about higher prices. Mm -hmm. I heard the great story today that they made $5 billion because of it, the Treasury, but what the do that yeah, nothing no, good so happens good. if this continues so hopefully uh, this gets done sooner rather than later but Melissa I, I mean Gary talks about we want some certainty about the outcome and, and companies want that the certainty before this was that you were going to get robbed if you did business in China that they were going to take your intellectual property that the, that the you know playing ground was very unlevel um, so we may not be making a lot of progress, but the other situation wasn't great either. Why is that better, Melissa? Well, both of, the, both of them are problems. The tariff is a problem because of the inequality of the tariffs and stealing the intellectual property is a problem. So it's a twofold problem, which is why this is very complex. And as Gary said, it's gone on, on now for most of 2018. And I don't know if it will be resolved by the end of 2018. But one thing is, we need China. China needs us. In fact, the, uh, many Chinese people believe that, w that Americans can't afford to buy all American because it's more expensive. And because a lot of things where it says 99 cents, a lot of those things are made in China. So we really need each other. And in order for the global economy to all be in sync and everything to be perfect and harmonious, hopefully we work this out. Now, will it happen November 20th when the summit occurs? I absolutely do not know. But hopefully they're making progress. Because remember, if something doesn't get resolved by January 1, the tariffs are going up from 10 percent to 25 percent. And that the market will not like. But my concern is you, you can't ever yeah. pick the bottom if you want to be in long the market. And people will miss the next rally because once this problem is resolved, and I can't look into a crystal ball and tell you when it is, but once yeah. it is, and Trump is determined to resolve it, then the market is going to rip. Okay. And if you aren't in the market, you're going to miss the next move. All right, Gary, Melissa, thank you for that. Connell. All right, waiting for that to rip. Now, in the meantime, we have to shift gears to this awful story out in California. Rescue crews have been working around the clock as the wildfires rage up and down the state. No sign yet of a slowing down. There's a report coming to us from one of the hardest hit areas here coming up. Plus, a high-stakes sprint to the end of the year. Congress is back in session today amid a looming leadership fight. So what could the new Blue House mean for the White House? Fred Barnes, executive editor of the Weekly Standard, is next. That all smiles on Capitol Hill, but tough talk to Amazon. Why the Democratic darling Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez seems to be in the news a lot. Says her community in Queens, New York, is supposedly outraged over Amazon's second headquarters. Seems like good news, but... You would think...